Hi, my name is Keir Desai and I'm with the Cisco Wireless Stack. In this session, I will introduce some troubleshooting steps to identify client connectivity issues in a Cisco Unified Wireless Network deployment. The session uses the controller CLI for running specific debug commands to identify and isolate the root cause of client connectivity issues. The commands are independent of the platform and should work on a 5508, the 2500, Wisdom 2, and the 4400 controller platform. So let's get started. Before we look at the debug commands, let's take a layered approach to the client connection process. The client initially sends a probe request to identify all the available SSIDs or wireless networks available over the air. Based on all the probe responses and the client configuration, the client will first go through the open authentication process which is part of the 802.11 protocol. Following this, the client will send association requests. Once the client has received a successful association response from the access point, it will move to a layer 2 process of authentication. At this point, the client is successfully authenticated at layer 1. At layer 2, based on the use of pre-shared key or 802.1x based authentication, there will be several exchanges of EAP packets. If the authentication is successful, there will be an EAP success packet. At this time, the client has now completed layer 2 authentication. The client will now follow the DHCP process to get an IP address. Once the client receives an IP address, it is ready to pass traffic. This is a very simplistic high-level view of how the authentication process takes place at the different layers. To troubleshoot client issues, the single most important command is the debug client followed by the MAC address of the client in question. The command is actually a macro which packs together several debug commands together. You can run this debug command for only one client at a time. So don't try to troubleshoot several clients at the same time. The debugs are not process intensive, so it should work in a production environment. If you expect the client to roam across multiple controllers, Make sure you run this command across all the controllers simultaneously and ideally you would want the controllers to be NTP time synced. Also make sure you log the session output because the output goes really fast so if you have a tool like PuTTY or TerraTerm or any tool of your choice make sure you log the session output. Once the debugs are captured you can use the debug disable all command to turn off all the debugs. Besides the debug command, the show client detail command used in tandem can be very helpful in identifying client connectivity issues. The policy manager state provided here on the CLI gives a quick snapshot of the current state of the client. Our end goal should be always to get the client in the run state. Besides the policy manager state, there are additional information that can be gleaned from the CLI command, like the AP's name, the SSID on which the client is connected to the channel on which the access point is operating on and also the authentication type for the specific client. If you prefer the web GUI, you can check the status of a client by using the monitor tab under the client section and then selecting a specific client. You will see the policy manager state, the AP that the client is connecting to and the security profile for that specific client. In order to interpret the output of the wireless client debugs, it is important to understand the client policy manager state. The policy manager state indicates the current state the client is in. It can be gleaned from the controller's GUI page or also by using the show client detail command on the controller CLI. Some of the popular states that you would be seeing as the client moves from the initial start state to the run state are listed here. Like for example, the 802.1x required indicates that the client has not yet completed layer 2 authentication. The DHCP required state indicates that the client has completed authentication if it's using layer 2 authentication, but has not yet received an IP address. WebAuth required is a special case where the authentication takes place after the client has an IP address. And this is used very popularly in the guest access scenario where you have users getting an IP address and logging on to a web portal. Many times if the user is not logged in, you would see the client stuck in WebAuth required state. 
And finally, there is a run state, which is our end goal. If a client is in run state, it indicates that from a controller standpoint of view, it is ready to pass traffic. Once you have entered the debug client command, and if you were to power up a wireless client device, the first thing that you will be seeing is the association request. Here we see the association request is received by the controller on the access point with the following MAC address. There are additional details like the WAP ID, which indicates the WLAN ID or the SSID that the client is connecting to, and the interface, which indicates the VLAN on which the client would be connecting to. At the end of it, you would see an access point sending out an association response with status of zero. A status of zero indicates a successful association response. Any other status would indicate a failure in association and the client will not be able to proceed further. Here are some possible reason code for failed association response. For example, status 17 would indicate there are too many clients connected to an access point. A status of 18 would indicate that the client and the access point do not agree on the supported data rates. For example, if you had an SSID which supported 802.11G rates only, a client which supports only 802.11B will not be able to join that SSID. So take a quick look at all the other possible reason codes here. Now let's look at layer 2 as most of the client connection issues occur at the layer 2 process. At layer 2, we can broadly classify the authentication process in an enterprise flavor or the personal or the pre-shared key flavor. In enterprise flavor, we have the WPA enterprise and the WPA2 enterprise. In both these, we use EAP-based authentication like PEEP, EAP TLS, EAP FAST, and EAP LEAP as possible EAP techniques used as part of the authentication process. On the personal side, we use a pre-shared key, which is similar to a web shared key, but it's a much stronger encryption. Based on the use of WPA or WPA2, you would be using TKIP as the encryption for WPA, whereas AES for WPA2. The configurations, if you look on the right, right hand side, is pretty straightforward. Under the layer 2 tab, you would see you would select WPA plus WPA2 here and then select WPA with TKIP and WPA2 with AES. If you were to do dot .1x based authentication, which is the EAP methods, you would use A to do .1x. If you were to use the pre-shared key, you would select the PSK from the drop-down menu. Additional debug commands like debug dot .1x all enable, debug AAA all enable can be helpful to additional to provide additional details of what the client is doing. Now there are several things that can cause issues for layer 2 authentication fa failure, but the radius and the client logs can point us in the right direction. One aspect about the configuration that confuses a lot of users is how do we select the EAP types and where do I make that change on the controller? Well, if you're using an external radius server, there's nothing that you need to do on the controller. The type of EAP authentication is decided between the client and the radius server, and the controller is just a simple conduit between the two. So the EAP authentication or the EAP exchange, as part of that, there is a process in build to def decide which type of EAP the client and the radius server are gonna agree to use. Unless you're using the wireless controller as the radius server, there is no need to define any EAP types on the controller. Now let's take a close look at the .1x authentication process before we look into the debug commands.